Hi, my name is Richard Tripp, and I'm here at the Great Ponds Gallery in Lakeville Public Library, looking at a fantastic collection of paintings by a local painter, Dan Cooney. Dan. Hi, Richard. How are you? Hi. This is a fantastic collection of paintings. Well, thank you for saying so. Um, How did the idea come about to uh, do something like this? Well, uh, the name of the, the sh exhibition is Hometown Series, and I think it's a feeling that I think we all have after living in a place for a certain amount of time. We become somewhat uh, almost taking it for granted, but then we don't. And we reflect, maybe, and um, that's where I got the idea from. And just uh, looking at some of the places around here, around Lakeville, Middleborough, Carver, um, that we see every day, we, um, and uh, just reflecting on them, I thought, oh, good subject for painting. Mm. Yeah. So. Something that kind of surprised me is that um, some of the views are places that I know very well, and I had never quite thought to see them as you've painted them. Um, you paint frequently by taking photographs first, or? Well, in this case in particular, I, I do. I mean, I've, I've taught painting. I've done a lot of different types of paintings, plain air painting. Mm -hmm. uh, there is one <clears throat> example of plain air painting on the far wall. But in this case, I, I have worked from photos, sometimes a series of photos. Um, and um, sometimes parts of different photos I put together. And uh, yeah, so that's one way. I've heard that you're a very prolific painter, and I'm wondering how you got, how you got started as a young kid, oh, I suppose. That's a great question. Um, I, I, I guess prolific, I, I never feel like I'm as prolific as I wanted to be, um, but uh, I, try to, I try to paint whenever I have the time. And, um, um, but uh, yeah, I've been painting since I was, uh, oh, I don't know, four years old or so, just like everybody else. I guess uh, the only uh, difference is I just kept doing it. I kept being challenged by it, mm -hmm. curious about it, trying to do a better job, and try to do a different series. And um, so, yeah, that's, so that's, that's it. Yeah. And you went to the Swain School in New Bedford. I did, yes. Um, and, wanna... and did that have a particular type of influence? I mean, if someone came in here who knew other people who had been to the Swain School, would they recognize anything in your style or your techniques? That's a great question, too. Uh, I'm told they would. I'm told mm -hmm. by some people who have been to shows of Swain uh, artists, Swain trained artists, um, that, that there is certain aspects to my work um, that, that stand out as a could be the colors, it could be the underpainting, maybe. Mm -hmm. But uh, I think it was a huge, huge influence on me, and I, I am forever grateful for the education that I received there. Um, and, um, and again, I just try to build on that uh, the rest of my, my life. I mean, I also went to, uh, I received my master's degree at UC Berkeley in California, mm -hmm. and that was a, a, a different school of painting, if you will, uh, with uh, Diebenkorn and Bischoff being the, the big influencers there. and. Um, um, a few others, but uh, yeah, I, yeah, I think we all have to find our own language, and I'm, I guess I'm still, you know, formulating mine, mm -hmm. um, and, it, and it changes. <laughs> I guess that's what keeps it exciting. Right. You know? Well, why don't we take a look at a few of the paintings, and you can uh, tell me a little bit about them. Great. Sure. Good. When I first walked into the gallery, I was really impressed at how everything was set up. And I'm wondering, how do you decide what to put where? Because I know that sometimes when you have, a, well, I don't know, a couple of dozen paintings, uh, what determines what goes where? Yeah, that's a good question again. Um, well, um, well, I, I wasn't sure, exactly sure, but I knew I had at, at least 24, 25 paintings that I wanted to show that I thought could fit into this theme. And so um, it, I divided it into sort of four parts. Um, based on the four walls. Um, and um, this is the first wall, which I call, I guess, process and history, because these are probably some of the older paintings, aside from this one here. Uh, but this one has a process in it that a lot of people were asking about. Um, so, and some of these others are actually quite old. Um, um, and, but they, 
they remind me that, that I've thought about this um, hometown feeling <clears throat> for quite some time, and I had incorporated it into other series in the past. So, um, this particular painting, though, is not so much about the history, but about process. Um, because the way, as you asked me about photography, uh, I did use photography to initially give me the seed of an idea. And this is an excellent example of it, where there's a photo in the middle with all the details. But I intentionally, in, in initially, uh, wanted to use this as a, so, sort of a sketch to do a larger painting, much larger painting of uh, the Clear Pond Beach in Lakeville, um, which we all know. Anybody who's grown up in Lakeville has spent some time at Clear Pond Beach. And uh, I just thought it'd make a good topic for a hometown painting. So um, I started with a photo, and I sort of you know, taped it down to a, 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 a format, a long format. And then I started painting around it, but it got to the point where I kind of thought it was interesting. And I, and I sort of just kept it, and, and I ended up finishing it and um, not yet doing the larger version of it, but uh, I might still do. Yeah, so, so that... Well, it's interesting because um, everybody who's, as you said, everybody who's lived here or been here will recognize the scene very easily. Uh, and yet you have certain elements in this picture that you've um, mirrored in other larger paintings, like the upper left-hand corner here, the trees, and those are the trees down there in a much more modern sort of contemporary style, which I think is interesting. So this almost looks like a photograph, and those look very contemporary and geometric and, and very different, but they're the same place. Similar place, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, one of them is exactly the same place. The other one is uh, more uh, a White Banks uh, view, okay. but very similar. Mm -hmm. um, but you're right, uh, same subject matter, different approach. And, mm -hmm. and that's how the series are broken up, where I, I'm, I'm more interested in a formal aspect of, of, of the painting, and I focus on that aspect as well as the subject matter. So, but that's why I think there, there's an overlap. And you, you picked up on it. It's great eyes to see that, that connection. And I think that that tree pattern in rhythm mm -hmm. is something that you know, helps, like music, creates a rhythm, in a visual rhythm in, in the, the work. And it's funny that you picked up on you saw the connection between that. Yeah, yeah. thanks for seeing that. Well, here we are at the second wall, and um, a little bit different than the first. It looks much more seasonal over here, and very appropriate for the town of Lakeville since we are the, I guess, world headquarters for ocean spray cranberries. And um, obviously this is harvesting of cranberries. That's right, right. And I agree, because it is Lakeville and it's the home of ocean spray. And we, we do see um, the cranberries um, at that, in the fall season for harvest, and I think it's an incredible thing that I have to say, when I was younger and I, I grew up here or, or in, the, in the region, I always took it for granted. Okay, this cranberry box, okay, they harvest them, you know, big deal. But when I moved away in other places like the sunflower fields of France or um, places like that, I, I came back and all of a sudden these colorful geometric shapes of cranberries being harvested really stood out to me and I thought make a great subject matter for, for paintings. So this is one of my favorite ones. This was actually um, something I was driving by um, this particular cranberry bog at a certain time because you can't you can't um, you can't um, figure out exactly when they're going to harvest. I think they don't even know until the day is right and then they harvest. So you have to be just lucky to be driving by when there's there's a harvest. So every any time I do that and I see one, I get out and I photograph it, and then later try to use the photographs to put together a painting. And uh, I just love the, this uh, particular composition because it has the shadows in the, in the bottom of the painting, which were naturally there, and I enhanced a little. And then the, uh, it sort of windowed in or boxed in with um, the oak leaves uh, hanging overhead. So I think it, it, the painting really was, um, I mean, it was, I saw a painting as I drove by and mm. I tried to, uh, tried to do it. So. I know you said this particular um, scene is in Carver. But it's, um, it, it's common enough so that you might see it in any of the surrounding towns. True. And it, it, it's not specific enough so that you could almost 
put your own story into it. I mean, it, it looks like the bogs on Highland Road. It looks like um, so many bogs in the towns around. No, it's true. And it's, uh, yeah, it's more symbolic of any cranberry bog in the, the and it's the kind region, of iconic. the southeastern Massachusetts region. It's yeah. really iconic, too, oh. you know. I had some friends visiting from England some years ago, and we went down Stetson Street, and they saw bog harvest like this, and they were shocked. They said, we thought cranberries grew on trees. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so well, very, very instructional as well. It's true, and I tried to ca capture the moment and the whole process. Uh, you can almost use it as a tutorial. This is how they do it. They, they flood the bogs. The cranberries float, they harvest them in this big circle, and the circle gets smaller and smaller and smaller, and as they do, they, they suck them into this truck here. So, you know, it's, it was fascinating to me, and, and it, it held my attention as a painter. I hope it holds the attention of the viewer. One thing that I kind of like about this picture, too, is that I like things that are very quaint and old-fashioned, and I like the fact that we have the juxtaposition of nature and machinery, and I think the machinery really adds a lot to what's happening here. That's another great observation, mm. Richard. Did you used to be a teacher? Mm, maybe. <laughs> <laughs> it sounds like it. No, I, I agree, and I think that, 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 uh, that, that, yeah, and the McCoy Man, of course, has changed over the years, and so this does, in a sense, actually capture, you know, our, a moment, our, in, time. A moment in our time, in yeah. our lifetime, yeah. so I'm sure 30, 40 years ago, those trucks were different, and you know, I think the process was still similar, but still mm -hmm. the machinery was different. Mm -hmm. you know? So that's yeah. interesting. Yeah. yeah. Are there any other paintings on this wall that that we should talk about? Actually, there are. There are two at the very end that I'd like to take a look okay, at. Okay, let's go. Okay. I'm really interested in architecture, and there are a lot of really neat houses and buildings in Lakeville, and you have two here that are interesting probably to both of us. <laughs> one is your house and one is my house. That's and, right. Um, I remember before you came there, a man named George Hall lived there. And after his retirement from the uh, state police, he used that garage, now your studio, as his uh, workshop for fixing mowers and rototillers. And now you're in there painting pictures. It's, that's kind of an interesting... It's true. When we looked Story. at the house 18 years ago, when we bought it, um, it was one of the selling points. He had it. He he, he must have been a Radio Shack type of guy because he it was just they were plugs and and fixtures and every lights everything. He had done a lot of the work himself clearly. Mm -hmm. So it was it was like moving ready for for any kind of uh, studio or anyone who did, you know worked with their hands or or right. you know, in my case, you know I did a little bit of everything. So it was it was really a nice studio right from the start. So. Yeah. Um, That's great. Yeah. Uh, these are both winter scenes, and um, I, I remember you telling me that they were painted on, th these are not on canvas, right? No, both of these are on uh, wood, I believe. Yes, wood. That uh, a good friend of mine, Max Wickmeyer, he's a, he's a, um, a hobbyist in, in woodworking, uh, mm -hmm. he custom makes these um, birch panel um, um, uh, painting supports, uh, if you will, uh, for me, and um, he does a great job. He's been supplying me these for years. So, yeah, I like it because you don't have that trampoline effect uh, mm -hmm. that you get on canvas sometimes. Right. Right. And um, I don't know. I think they're more durable. Mm -hmm. for, you know, you don't have to worry about it being punctured in the back or anything. So, yeah. And I recognize this as Windy Hill Farm. That's I've right. Lived there since 1979. Okay. And uh, interestingly enough, uh, friends of our family lived there from the late 19th century up until sometime in the 40s or early 50s. And Mildred Pratt Stafford, who was uh, the librarian here in town for several decades, actually was born in this house and also raised her family in this house. Hmm. And um, it's, it's a great place. It's well, now, it, a, it's now a sheep farm. Yeah. Well, as you remember, when we first met, and I discovered you're the one who owned this house, mm -hmm. I was kind of like gushing because even before I met you, this was my favorite house in Lakeville. I just think the property, the, the way it's on this little hill, the Gothic style farmhouse, the, 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 the driveway that comes in and goes around, the trees, the mature trees, I just thought it was a, a, a classic New England um, 
farmhouse, a Gothic farmhouse. It just, I just think it's great. It's, it's one of the nicest houses in Lakeville. So I always wanted to paint it, mm -hmm. and I finally got to do that uh, this past uh, winter. Um, and I've always wanted to do winter scenes, and so this was my year of doing winter scenes. I did my house first, then I did yours. And uh, I'm happy with the results, and I, and I, can, I can foresee some more winter uh, snow scenes in the future. Mm -hmm. yeah. One of the things, if, if I can keep going, about I really enjoy is, is getting the paint on uh, with a splattering effect. It's almost like combining uh, Edward Hopper uh, um, uh, material, uh, um, subject matter, with uh, Jackson Pollock uh, execution, <laughs> if you will. Does, does that scare you at all? I mean, you paint this picture that you're relatively happy with, and then you've got to make it look like snow falling. And so you take white and pink and other colors perhaps, and just kind of start to splatter it. Does that make you a little bit apprehensive about it, how it's going to come it, out? It used to a lot, so much yeah. so that I was afraid to do it. And yeah. then, you know, I sort of let go a little bit and say, you know, let, let the organic mist fly, as it were, <laughs> and, and see what happens. And, and I got better at controlling it and, and mm -hmm. um, you know, wipe away in effect. But, you, but it's true, and that's how it does work. You sort of have to lay down the, the solid bones of, of the painting first. And uh, it's just when you get the color just right and everything else, and then you then you risk having to mess it up if you don't, you know, splatter it right or whatever. Or, or so, but that's part of the risk and challenge of of painting, I think. So, but I enjoy it. it keeps... Now I'm assuming that because it was February when you did this, um, this was not plein air painting, and that you took a photograph. So again, it was just the luck of the time you happened to be passing and. Right. The picture you got, right? Right. As, as you know, you live right down the street from me, and mm -hmm. I pass this a lot. On, on, so, so if any time I'm passing and, and, and the, the atmosphere is, is interesting, the light is right, or some, for some, I just pull over in front of your house, take a few shots, and move on. So it's sort of a drive-by photography that I have. So as a result, I have quite a collection of photos from the front of your house and mm -hmm. different times of day and different atmosphere and I, I put together a few different ones here. I liked how the snow was, it was sort of late after a, a snow melt as it were, it was some, some of the, the ground was showing. I just thought it was the perfect combination mm -hmm. and so, um, so yeah, I, was, I felt you know, like all my, my photographs and time it paid off. I finally had the right combination and I just threw it together and mm. it, it's, it's become one of my favorite paintings. Mm. So. And I'm hoping to do three more, so ah. spring, summer, and fall. So we'll okay. stay tuned. We'll see how get, those get come the out. seasons all in yeah. there. Yeah. 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 Sure. Okay. Well, let's move on to the next wall. Okay. I know you've taught some art classes in France, and I know you've painted fields of sunflowers in France. So just as I asked you before, could someone tell that you were from the Swain School? Could someone come in and look at these sunflowers and say, ah, these are French sunflowers? <laughs> oh, I don't know. That's, that's a good <laughs> are question. They? Well, some of them are. Yes, I would say yes. Okay. Yes. I think th these are definitely from France. They were painted in France, and it, some of it may have actually been done in the field, but then back to the studio and, and, mm -hmm. and fixed up and, sure. and, and redone. Um, yeah, as you know, we, we, we traveled to France. My wife's French and oh, French American now. Um, but we, um, yeah, so we, I used to bring uh, paint, students to paint in France, doing plein air painting and whatnot for workshops and such. So I've painted my fair share of sunflowers. Um, and um, yeah, I enjoy it. Uh, uh, I don't know. Uh, if one thing you can notice about these sunflowers, we were talking earlier about what connects some of the work. I don't know if it's a Swain thing, it's probably not, but um, it's more my influence maybe by the expressionist um, Pollock. I, I like splattering that paint, so mm -hmm. I think every one of these, in, and I have an excuse here because the pollen is like dust, and mm -hmm. we don't always see it, mm -hmm. but I'm sort of making it visible by mm -hmm. splattering the, the pollens and, and, and having that as part of the... I think it gives it life and, um, and, and another layer of interest. So mm. that's what I'll say about those. These, uh, these uh, irises are, are local. In fact, I think these are the ones that you gave me. Uh -huh. You gave me some bulbs, uh, iris bulbs, uh, a few years back. And this could be from them, because I know they were from my garden. So mm -hmm. that's that. And the only other flower on this wall is the, I call it uh, winter roses that uh, someone brought me um, near um, Valentine's Day. 
And um, I thought they were the perfect subject for a, a dark winter painting, but with you know bright ro pink roses. Mm. So that's the flower wall. Great. Yeah. Well, one of my favorite paintings is on the last wall, so I think we should go over there and take a look at it. All right. The Elliott Farm is one of my favorite paintings in the show, I think. Oh, thank you. It's um, really iconic. It's, uh, when I was growing up in Lakeville, the town was about 2,000 people in size. Wow. I don't know what it is now. It might be 10 or 12,000. I think you're right. And we've always thought of ourselves as an agricultural town and a rural town, but that's fast changing. Farms are disappearing. There aren't many left. And the Wilkie Farm was the first farm uh, where Ken Elliott lives. He lives on part of it. Was the first farm in the state that was designated um, as an agricultural preservation area oh. that couldn't be developed. So it's been saved from development and a little bit of farming goes on there. And um, it's a very popular vegetable stand in the summer. And, yes, uh, it is, yeah. Right on Main Street and has a lot of visibility and almost everybody would recognize this, I think. Yeah, I think you're right. Again, it's on Main Street and uh, we, I travel up and down Main Street quite a bit. And I, I so again, it's like your house, like I drive by and I see the light just right or something interesting going on. Mm -hmm. I just think it's a great subject for a painting, uh, just because of its interest and because, like you said, the, so, the, uh, the historical, social aspects mm -hmm. of it. Um, and um, so I, you know, I, I've been meaning to paint this for a long time, and I'm, I'm glad I finally got it. Um, but you know, um, I, I may do do it again. This is springtime. It's doesn't have the lively summer group that's there stopping by, buying their corn or anything like that. So, you know, maybe I'll go back again and, and try another version or so if I get the time. Um, I think it's a special land, too, because uh, this always reminded me of the history of Lakeville. also goes way back to uh, the native occupants who lived here, mm -hmm. uh, who were also farmers and hunters and um, shepherds of the land, keepers, stewards of the land. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, I sort of gave a, a wink and a nod to that by, by depicting... Uh, a Native American in here, and you don't see him right away, but he's just more of a symbolic uh, presence, I think, um, to remind us of that mm -hmm. future. So. Great. Well, it was just um, probably less than a mile down the road from here that um, there was a murder at the edge of Assawampsa Pond that started King Philip's War, and I think it was 1672, so um, it's kind of a nice Nod to the history? Nod to the history, yeah, yeah, it is. Also, I don't know, most people probably won't remember, but before Lake Assawampsit was um, owned by, the water rights were owned by someone else, and before, I, I think it's the town of, uh, the city of New Bedford who has the water rights there. Right. Um, or it could be Taunton. <laughs> I don't really know, but somebody else does anyway. Sure. Um, but before, there, there were many other properties that were disposed of. And this barn actually was moved to this location that was right around the corner from Asawamps at school, uh, just within sight of where we are now in the library. Wow. And I didn't know that. When, when the city, whichever city it was, bought the water rights, the farm was being demolished and the barn was moved up here. And Interesting. Wallace Wilkie had it as his uh, one of his barns. Well, that's an interesting note. Yeah. yeah, thanks. So, any other paintings on this wall that uh, you want to talk about? Well, I don't know. What about you? Do you uh, you want to say anything about any of them in particular? Yeah. Um, geez, I could talk on each one for days. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, no, I don't know. I mean, I mean, this is one of my, I think they're all, they've all been my favorite at some point. But uh, I do like this one. This one, of course, is in Lakeville. It's, it's down near the, the canal, the Cape Cod Canal. But a couple of years ago, uh, when I did this painting, it was, um, I had never caught a striper, and neither had my son. But we decided to dedicate the summer to trying to learn. And we had um, somebody help us and give us the tips that you need to know, the secret tips. And we did end up catching our first uh, striper of the year. That depicts my son at 17 at the time, catching his first striper. 
And so that's kind of a nice souvenir for, you know. Is that Keenan or Austin? That's Keenan, mm -hmm. you know, the younger. Yeah. Well, so. I think you have captured the feeling of hometown. Thank you. And um, the pictures are really fabulous. And I know they're going to be up through February, so I hope that uh, everybody gets in to see them because sure. they're really wonderful. Thank you. And a footnote, they are for sale. Uh, they were both, well, most of them, some of them are already sold and others belong in collections. But, uh, but I've made them all available in um, um, enhanced canvas prints uh, form, which is a lot less expensive if anybody's interested. So, what, what does that mean? And 25% exactly? of any sales goes back to the library and to the gallery. What does an enhanced print mean exactly? Well, with the digital age, we can now take good quality photographs of the paintings, mm -hmm. and then I can, I can have them transferred to a canvas um, print and stretch just like a canvas. Mm -hmm. But to me, when I get them back, they look a little flat. They, they are on canvas, but they, they lack the texture, so I will go back in and enhance that print with um, gel and medium and, and some paint in some cases mm -hmm. and re-sign them with paint mm -hmm. and, and actually give them a varnish. So it looks more like a painting. A lot of people can't tell. Mm -hmm. So I think it's a pretty good value for yeah. like a quarter of the price of an original right. to have a canvas print. So anyway. Well, thank you so much. Well, thanks it's for talking with me. Very Enjoyed it. educational. Thank you. So. Uh, just want to thank Richard Tripp for stopping by. As soon as he left, who, who, uh, who came by but uh, my son Keenan. Hey Keenan. How Hi, you how's doing? it going? Thanks for coming by. Good. <laughs> so you're going to ask me a few questions? Yeah. I'd like right. to know your opinion on a couple of these paintings and a couple of questions about you. Great. We were just talking, Richard was here, and we were just talking about this painting. I told him about that. Right, cool. Do you have any questions about this painting? Um, what inspired you to, to paint it? <laughs> <laughs> you know. It's you. Right? Yes. So that, in that summer, that, uh, not this past summer, but the one before, right, right. 2017, we both uh, caught our first stripers. And uh, right. that was a lot of fun, wasn't yeah. it? Yeah, a memorable moment, for mm -hmm. sure. So what about, does this bring back that memory? Is it a good souvenir It does, for you? Yeah. yeah. It was kind of the end of the summer. Um, it, was, uh, yeah, it, was a, it was a fun time, a good, good thing to look at. <laughs> All right. Well, um, are there other paintings that you'd want to talk about? In fact, if I had a question, for you, I, I think I'd talk about this one. Yeah. You want to talk about that one? Uh, sure, yeah. So tell me about this painting. Well, another painting that you're in, in fact. Uh, Is that me right there? Yeah. That's number five, I think you were number oh, five. Okay. Yeah. But uh, we've been to a few soccer games together, I think, yeah, right? This sure. is one of them. Uh, not locally necessarily, but in Massachusetts, was on a, an away game. And I just couldn't help notice, you know, you guys were all out there playing, but I was, I was approaching the field and, and the, I couldn't even see the, the, the players because <laughs> we had this an array of variety of umbrellas <laughs> and people, the parents standing there watching it. And I just thought, hey, that might make a good painting. Yeah. So I took a bunch of photos and, you know, later I, I went home and started working on it. Yeah. But I think one of the in most interesting things about it is I was experimenting with the um, varnishes. To, to, I really wanted to get that yeah, feeling of that. rain. It's cool, yeah. From a certain angle, the I think angle, you got you a better angle. You can see the, the reflection of all the, the yeah. sprays of varnish that you used. It looks like you know heavy downpours, and that's the condition that we were in. It was it was downpouring. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's how that turned out. But cool. another good souvenir, I yeah, think. Yeah. Sure. So what else do you want to talk about? Um, I'd like to go over here to talk about a few paintings. Okay, let's go. Yeah. So, Dad, yeah. I'd like to know, you know, who influenced you to create something, you know, like this, you know, with all the shapes and everything. Who were your influencers for this? Well, I, I've looked at a lot of other painters, mm -hmm. and I, I, I don't think I could give directly one person. I mean, you've got to look at Mondrian, who right, was, right. who was somebody who was known for dividing up the, the picture plane in, you know, geometric forms and, and emphasizing the. The, the lines, the, the, the uh, horizontals, verticals, and diagonals. And so I was always interested in that a bit, but I was always also interested in still having some representational hook where people could see what's going on and maybe identify it. But yet, as a design, moving the colors around and breaking it up. You might even say some of the cubists, you know, who are looking at the same thing in two different ways. 
Um, so, but I was always drawn to the, what happens. Um, in fact, one of these other paintings over here, Bale's Bait, Babe's Bait, um, was an earlier painting that I noticed when the sunlight hits an object and it gets um, really bright, it becomes um, a, a, a geometric shape that pops off the canvas. Right. And that always fascinated me, and I took it to a new level, I suppose, on this one. This is called uh, <coughs> White Banks Autumn, and it's part of a four-season um, series that I did of, of the same scene almost, but in different seasons. And uh, the summer one is, uh, you can find that, was purchased by the Children's Hospital in Boston. It's up in the cancer Very ward. Cool. Cool. So, Interesting. Yeah. So anything else on this wall you want to talk about? Uh, is this of the same, this painting here, is this of the same uh, White Banks, or is that a different location? No, this, is, this one is actually done over near Clear Pond. Clear Pond, okay. So the backside of Clear Pond, in fact. Would so. you say these two are, you know, similar in style? I, I see, you know, the trees, but not as many shapes, would you say they're... You know, yeah, they, they were part of the, the same series. This one started out, I think it was the first one that I actually started drawing um, lines, diagonals, and seeing the diagonals and emphasizing them a little bit mm -hmm. in, a, in, a, in a drawing way, so I didn't want to overstate it. And by the time I got to the end of the series, which was about 30 or 40 paintings, I was really popping out shapes and right. making them obvious. So they are related, but... Um, they are local scenes and, um, you know, a place that we walk by, you know, fairly often. But, uh, hmm. yeah, so that's, that's that scene. Very yeah. nice. So, Dad, I see three paintings of the same building. Um, what can you tell me uh, about them? What, what makes them different? Well, um, there are actually two paintings and one canvas print that's been enhanced. A lot of people can't tell the difference. But I found out that a lot, of, a lot of people don't want to spend the money on an original painting. Um, right. And so um, with today's technology, I found out you can do digital prints on canvas and have them framed for a, really a fraction of the cost, maybe a, a fourth of the cost of the original painting. Um, I mean, I'd, I'd like to get these out to people who are interested in and want to own them, but really don't have it in their budget. So. So that's what this one is. And then in addition to having it uh, digitalized um, and coming on canvas, I, I enhance it by adding texture and maybe some other, a little, little touches of paint in here, and then I sign them. So, um, yeah, so for, for something like that, it's, a, it's like a quarter of the price of something like this. Right, more affordable for people. Yeah, but, uh, and you get different results. Sometimes the original, the sky is bluer. Yeah. Than, oh, yeah, than this particular that. print, you know, didn't, didn't uh, show. But on the other hand, it looks like the yellow popped a little more. So yeah. they're not exactly the same. They're their they're own kind of unique print original. Now this painting, this was the last one I did before um, we hung the show. And part of it was based on the reaction of Erica, who's the owner of Star Drive-In. Um, and I went down to see her and talked to her about the show and gave her some postcards to put in her shop. And um, in the the sun was just setting and it was a beautiful scene so I grabbed a couple of pictures, took a couple of shots and I had just enough time to put this painting together a few days before we hung the show. So that's why that's in here and that's, yeah, I like it too. So it's, it's, it's an iconic, um, I've got a lot of great reactions from this. It, yeah, it's an iconic uh, restaurant that right off of Route 140 and uh, East Taunton. And people go by it a lot, and I've heard a lot of um, reactions from people because it's been there for so long. Yeah. 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 Um, aside from being just a building or a, a nice scene that you're painting, you know, what are your painting? What, what kind of different meanings do your paintings have? Oh, I think I know what you're getting at. Yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes I try to infuse them with another layer of meaning, if that's right. what you're right, talking right. about. And you've heard me talk about it, I think. Yes. But, I mean, not all of them do. I think there's, I mean, you can draw your own meaning, I, I, and I think that's how painting and art should be. Mm -hmm. People should be able to bring their own interpretation to it, and, and there's no right or wrong. Uh, sometimes I'll put little hints in it. I mean, right. for example, this one has some flags in it. Right, uh, The that. print doesn't have flags, but the, the, the original does. Um, and, you know, you can draw your own conclusion from what those flags mean. Um, there's an American flag, and then there's these other flags, and I'm, I'm not going to say any more. <laughs>
Echo. Echo. Some of the other paintings that have the, these multiple meanings, uh, you can take a closer look at them at two. Um, but again, I think that's up to each individual to draw their own interpretation. Right. So, but I do try to give it another layer sometimes. I think it's more interesting. Sometimes I'll actually hide uh, images in the clouds or in the sky. Mm -hmm. So take a look for those next right, time you yeah. look at my paintings. Cool. Any other questions? Or? Um, no, I'd like to move on to that wall over there, specific painting I'd like to talk about. Okay. So, Dad, um, when would you say you started making art, and how has it changed over time? Um, well, I'd like everybody else, I think I started when I was four years old, right. you know, crayons and watercolor. Mm -hmm. um, but I just, I enjoyed it. I kept doing it. To me, it was a language. It was a way to communicate things that were on my mind or things that I was curious about. Um, I got a lot of encouragement in doing it. So I just kept doing it. I, I started going to the Swain School of Design uh, when I was nine and 10 years old. I used to ride my bike there on Saturdays in New Bedford. Uh, later on, I went to college there, graduated um, with a degree in graphic design. Mm -hmm. um, but I always wanted to go back to painting. So when I moved to California, I ended up applying to UC Berkeley and I got, earned my master's degree in painting at UC Berkeley. Mm -hmm. um, then you know, I kept painting, I was teaching for a while um, taught locally at um, Bridgewater State College and a few other places. And uh, I just kept, at that point I was my own teacher and I just kept challenging myself with new styles, new, new um, I don't know, techniques and, and, and just, you know, I work in series. So, yeah, that's how I ended up. Cool. Does, that, does that answer your question, son? Yes. <laughs> um, I noticed this is the pond that I built at home with my koi koi fish and goldfish. Um, yeah. What inspired you to, to paint this? And I, I see a lot of circular motion, which is re reflecting the, the ripples in the water. You know, can you, can you tell me about this painting? Yeah. yeah. Well, as you know, I mean, I watched your interest. You started with uh, uh, aquariums right. and, and little goldfish in the aquariums, and they turned to other fish, a tropical mm -hmm. fish, and so on. And then uh, you and a friend of yours both got interested in, in the koi pond thing, and so you started studying it. And then next thing you know, you're, you're, you created a business, and you're and you're uh, you're building koi ponds for other people, and, mm -hmm. and maintaining others. And, and then you built one in the backyard, and I was just so impressed. With it. And I like koi ponds too. I like fish. I think they're interesting, you know, objects of of color and movement. And those are challenges to try to catch in painting. Uh, the, you know, the color and the movement of the water, you know, it's a difficult challenge sometimes. So, gee, when you were working on it, I was, I was so interested in it, I'd like, I wanted to uh, see if I could capture it. So I took a lot of photos after yeah. you were done yeah. and, um, you know, put together some different ones and tried to create, you know, a, 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 this is almost to scale, I think. Well, actually, yeah. I think this fish never got quite that big. <laughs> But it's maybe three Goldf quarters. Goldfish are about yeah. It was about three quarters. So I exaggerated a little bit, right, but right. that's what, that's what art does. But um, yeah, I don't know if there's a story there or not. I call it King Koi. Mm -hmm. But this is the one koi that left, and these were all 19 cent uh, goldfish, goldfish from yeah. feeder totally fish right. that we turned into. But they grew right. um, and make their own statement and create their own rhythms. I think. Right. So anyway, that's what's what I can say about that. I hope you like it. Yeah, maybe I love it. it'll be I yours someday. It. Yeah. Maybe. So any other questions? Uh, I have one final question. So, um, it's a difficult one, but of all these paintings in the gallery here you, you, you created, what would you say is the one you felt most strong about, or the one you feel most strong about? Which one do you like mm -hmm. the most? Well, that's a, that is a good question. It's, it's a hard question. It's which a tough is, question. It, almost like which is my favorite, but not necessarily. But, which right. one do I feel that you really tackle? Yeah, yeah. That you well, um, I think one of my favorites, I've got a couple, it's right, like, they're right. like children, they're all yeah, your yeah, favorite, exactly, you love exactly. them all the same, you know, <laughs> but, uh, but I, th I think the one, uh, uh, the portraits, uh, the snowy portrait of Richard's house, I think I like yeah. a lot, I like the, uh, one of the uh, uh, cranberry mm -hmm. fields mm -hmm. quite a lot, um, I do like uh, Babe's Bait, um, yeah. I think it's an earlier picture, and again, look for hidden signs there. Um, and I do like this one as well. I, I think they're all, I enjoy doing all of them and I look forward to doing more. Oh. Does that answer your question? Yes, it does, yeah. Well, thanks for coming by yeah, and talking thanks. to us about this. Great and, work. Uh, look forward to <laughs> seeing you do uh, some of your own creative work yeah. down the line. Yeah, yeah. All right.